After this, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly because of his fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might remove Jesus' body. Pilate gave him permission. So he came and took his body away. Nicodemus, who had previously come to him at night, also came, bringing a mixture of about 75 pounds of myrrh and aloes. They took Jesus' body and wrapped it in linen cloths with the fragrant spices according to the burial custom of the Jews. The panel in the Florentine church of St. Remigius aroused the admiration of its beholders, not only when it first appeared, but also throughout the centuries. Even today, visitors are attracted to it for its particular gracefulness. The painter, Giotto di Stefano, known as Giottino, is remembered by various sources as one of the Florentine masters of the 14th century, of whose work, unfortunately, very few examples remain. This painting in the Uffizi is his best-known achievement. The great cross at the center divides the scene into two parts. On the right stand the holy figures with their halos and their ancient clothing. The Virgin Mary St. John and Mary Magdalene. Notice the painter's ability to render through their expressions the different emotions of all those gathered in mourning around Jesus. On the left are a nun and a young girl praying, each protected by a saint. The nun and the young girl are the patrons of the painting. Both protected by Saint Benedict, founder of the order to which the nun belonged, and by Saint Remigius, to whom the church where the panel would be housed was consecrated. Notice how the patronesses are just slightly smaller than the sacred figures. The blonde young woman wears a sumptuous medieval dress in the latest fashion, with richly embroidered sleeves and neckline, enhanced with a beautiful gold and enamel belt. The patrons were the ones who dictated their own wishes and began to emerge from the painted scenes. Giotto's lesson is essential. In the figures, in their poses, in faces and expressions. Moreover, the scene is only apparently divided into two parts. Observe the figure on the left. Her pose. 
gestures, expression, and clothing, identify her as one of the three women who came to the sepulchre of Jesus. According to proxemic codes, which study the meaning of the position of elements in space, the fact that one of the mourning figures is separated from the others, in the first half of the scene, along with the patrons, completely revolutionizes the meaning of the work. The placement of the figure, beyond the patrons, involves them within the sacred representation. There is no longer an inside and outside, or a before and after. There are no longer two different places, and two different ages. All devotees of Christ, from every time and place, mourn his death together, in one space and at one moment of eternity. In a perpetual present, fixed forever in Giottino's work. Brought together by the same love, and the same sorrow. They are not only witnesses to the event, but actors in it. And as they do, so do the spectators and worshippers, seemingly outside the painting, but actually involved in the sacred representation. The cross therefore does not divide, but has the power to unite. The cross becomes a symbol of the union of sons of God. Beyond time and beyond space. Here the gold background, with no architecture or angels, has more of a role than ever before in uniting all the characters in a single dimension and time, which becomes an eternal instant. In this precious panel, Giottino shows not only that he learned Giottesque lessons, but also that he was able to apply the new trends in sacred representation that saw the figures of patrons as the protagonists of a new age of art and a renewed devotional sentiment.